You are listening to Change Radio News. Today is Friday, the 6th of September, 2024. The news read by Olive Ruzizo. And here are the headlines. President Shamisa demonstrates international standard leadership skills as he condemns Uganda violence. Chinese nationals accused of violating workers' rights and Mutangwa's previous statements on captured judiciary proved as state cases against human rights defenders and political activists weaken. And now for the news in detail. President Nelson Chamisa yesterday demonstrated that his leadership skills are of international standard and exactly what Africa and Zimbabwe need. This was noted by his advocacy for peace and condemning of violence in his solidarity message to recently shot fellow opposition leader in Uganda, Robert Kiagulani, also known as Bobby Wine. President Chamisa emphasized that liberty is soon coming to the people of Uganda and all struggling people of the world, including Zimbabwe. Change Radio spoke to his supporters who expressed confidence in their leader. Let's hear more from them. In the end, it was Madam General. Kubaku Glenville, the no Sigira President Wang Vanyo Son Chamisa. Vanyo Son Chamisa, Mun Vernararo, Verudo, Muna Nuchamari, Muna Nuna Mata, Unuona Wega, Kutu, Utunga Miri Wao, Uno Bakuna Mari, Housewe Pano Panik, Dua Mari Kutumana Mari Vita Basarakanak, Isu Ati Dimuna Nuti Tonga, Tnuda Muna Nuti Tonga Miri. Like a mutunga news, we do attack a pure and your son Chamisa. One of the Chamisa, one of the Zizza Kudanana, one of the Zizza Riara. When you guys in Babi Tirinapa, Nikaye do is in Babi Tirinapa, Tinoshungu Rosa, and one of Sungovas Namusha Zavapara, and one of Roo, one of Kuro Makumbo and it was say, As the Chamisa no Tatizure. Kuzure and the Kamari is so to even in Yamati when you could Zure. Nice was what no goti. Nerimwe zuba, mwaruwacha pindu na mna matu yedu, wani ufu nchamisa waka tunga mirza nyika ino, shaka naka, shisina miri junga, kuruwa kwe wanu, kusungwa kwe wanu, pasina chava taza. Tinunguti mwaruwe kudenga, dae wagu wana kumutunga mirza mkumama, ati tunga mirza nyika. Nekutitanzu wani kutuongwa munu mnyika ya Zimbabwe. Tinunguti wakune zime nyika zese, semata uruwa nita president wedu kutitunufana kubatana. Afrika ino shumufana kubatana. Tine nyika za kawanda, siluku shunguru zika, se nyika yedu ino ya Zimbabwe. Asi ntunungu taura kuti one day, mwari vacha ntukwa mina matu yedu sewa na ve Afrika. Ticha su nunguru. Na ita ino. Aha. Ah, ah. Maradi yu wanawe Zimbabwe. Ndine yutu kwa Christopher Chataika. Ndine muno muarare. Arare province. Ah. Tine ndi no dada na president di eh, advocate. Nyeso nchamisa. Sidadi so, mu Afrika, mu Zimbabwe, pasirosi, nwe mba nao. Takatu wa mira isosi. Kene takatu wa mira. Nukutu wane ma qualities of being a leader. Awadi wondo. Awadi kune tani wani. Awadi kana kutiroparide uke. Awadi ezire zi kutu wano denwa. E, wote ezira kutu, wote ezira kutu, wote watu wano wafi. Awadi, wanda wadi Zimbabwe. Itongwe, wa itongwe Zimbabwe, pasi na afa. So share shiri mo mnyika, mamina rofi, ese akawanda kudai, tuno kwana, kana chinge, kwa wacha misa wapinda bachigaro. Saka tunoda da nao, tunoto onzuwa, uwazi wano, kuno no kiru wakutu, niku garika, kana tina wacha misa, wacha misa, wacha tina sakanaka, lino tenda shangu, wano wa Zimbabwe, musila sakanaka. Chinese nationals in Zimbabwe have been accused of violating workers' rights. In July, two Chinese men tied up and beat workers at a mine in Bindura before being deported. Many Zimbabweans are worried about the agreements made with China at the ongoing forum due to the country's troubled history in Zimbabwe. Advocate Fadzai Mahere posted on social media urging people to question whether these trade deals and investments will truly benefit Zimbabwe. Others expressed doubt about whether President Nangagwa will act in the country's best interests or just for his own gain. There are calls for new leaders, especially given concerns about the current illegitimate government's corruption. Change Radio interacted with citizens to gain more insights 
Let's hear more. Sanike Jakaita Kwegu Kumach East. My Chinese Aura Yanita. She cheer one, cheer as she cheer one. Sagasiana Siana Kunikurum Negorid. Wana Wigu Avapu Maria Kodzera. Anu Shunguru Dwa. Anu Puama Bara. Asnama Kumbu. Patishanda Shako Marara. Asa Panaka Noana. Panasawa Noana. Minda ya pira. Apana sati mwana. Pati shunguruza. Macha inizi. Waura ya nyika. Waura ya nyika. Yisi mbabu ya parara. Wanawedu wa ruku shunguruzwa. Shaka omarara cha isu. Macha inizi. Waura ya nyika. Today marks day 82 since the arrest and detention without full trial of Senator Jameson Timba and 64 other activists. Last month, Mutangwa made statements making it clear that the activists will now be released since the SADC summit has concluded. This highlights how the judicial system in Zimbabwe is influenced by external pressure. They stated that the illegitimate government is using the law as a weapon. Separately today, former Harare Deputy Mayor Councillor Kudzaika Zombe has been cleared of all charges leveled against her as shared on Zimbabwe Human Monitor's platform. On other human rights violation related cases, let's hear this report. Former Binga North MP Prince Dwey Gosbanda, who is among the victims of alleged state oppression and human rights abuses, was today granted bail by the Harare High Court. Banda, arrested on August 18 in Zayt Bridge for allegedly inciting violence, was, re- was released on a 300 bill. In a separate case, Councillor Last Chinojga was granted $150 bill by Justice Chikowero at the High Court after spending 32 days in pre-trial detention. Represented by lawyer Tafiwa Mutineri P of Zimbabwe Lawyer for Human Rights, Chinojga has been ordered to report to Matapi Police Station once a month and avoid interfering with witnesses. Chinojga, who many claim is being persecuted for his political beliefs, is required to remain at his current address until the conclusion of his case. Meanwhile, in Baitbridge, Ezekiel Maraza was released on $100 bail by Magistrate Takuzgo Gwazemba. He faces similar conditions, including a non-interference clause with witnesses and investigations and the requirement to stay at his current residence. Maraza was represented by Patrick Terirai, also from Zimbabwe Lawyers for Human Rights. For a, com- for a comment on this change radio, spoke to human rights lawyer, advocate Martin Mureri, and this is what he had to say. Yes, it is clear that uh, the recent uh, arrest of uh, political activists is meant actually to silence their voices. And as we clearly pointed out earlier on, we are saying that the police, the courts, mustn't be used to settle by certain political parties to settle political scores. That to that we say no. There must be a separation of power that is the judiciary, legislature, as well as the executive. There must still be interference with the, exec- the, the, the judiciary in their operation, but as uh, clearly pointed out by the National Zan PF National Spokesperson, Chris Mutsango, some weeks ago, he clearly pointed out that it was, or it is now high time that the courts release these political activists uh, because the summit was over. That clearly showed the interference of a political party by the operations of the judiciary, which is indeed against our constitution of Zimbabwe and what we must know is that the human rights are enshrined in the constitution of Zimbabwe 
And that constitution is the supreme law of the land, our beloved Zimbabwe. And any actions, custom, and any interference with the judiciary must be said to be against the constitution and must be declared void to the extent of its inconsistency. This constitution must be respected by state agents, by all agents of the government, and we say no as a human right defender, I say no to the persecution of political activists as well as human defenders. Residents across the country have thrown their weight behind Harare Central MP Honorable Lavmo Jimus crusade against the electric power outages as well as electrical transportation systems and te telecommunications infrastructural damages that cause economic losses affecting the broader economy. Residents have embraced Honorable Jimus demand for effective enforcement of policies that address the issue of illegal copper exports he raised in Parliament a day before yesterday. Our reporter Kokelani spoke to various residents across the country. Mr. Stanislav Stube, who is resident chairperson of Bulawayo's Ward 9, which covers Mpopoma, part of Machobana and Mabu 20 or Square, has said this. Good evening. I am Tube Stanislav Ward 9 chairperson. What nine covers Mbopoma, about 20, Oswe, and part of Machogana. Residents are negatively affected by the Lord shedding, which is seriously affecting their lives. Uh, to be precise, from Monday to Thursday, residents experience more than 12 hour Lord shedding, and the time's power is restored at 12 midnight while it's 530. Um, it is again cut. Patients suffering from sugar diabetes are mostly affected as they normally store their injections in fridges and some residents who buy a food in bulk have also lost their food staff because of this long lot shedding. Gadgets are also destroyed because of Lord Shetty. Um, we have seen Zesa changing copper wires, putting aluminium cables uh, because of theft. However, residents are worried about the licensing of buyers and sellers of copper. They suspect that copper is bought from copper thieves. And strong security must be put in order to curb such. The drought induced by El Nino is severely impacting Zimbabwe and other areas of Southern Africa. As reported by EnviroPress yesterday, Many villagers in the Chile district are struggling to access water for their daily needs. In a related development, Community Voices of Zimbabwe, CVZ, has released a documentary highlighting the harsh effects of climate change in its latest project, which focuses on the devastating impact of El Nino on the farmers in Jombe during this drought. Meanwhile, there was chaos yesterday at the Kwekwe City Council meeting as councillors demanded answers about a new parking system that was implemented without official approval. Let's hear councillor Melody Chingarande and Washington Moyo speak. <laughs> I 
Fasina kana wakanga vambo zizi kwa kutusino pamba shezi Kaka makande la haka enda e, Paka neta bata mkuki bata mureku Paka tike management na yao makande la Akida minduro kutiko izu Waka itu wa shezi fasina approve hao e, e, Makande la Kaka Kambu ziko riliko ndere kuti Wongu Apana chaka mbosha hata kuti e, Munu anenda ine motikari yake Sana nda achikaka e, Mshiki paki muya Abadja redola Asitale ndi wampe vye kutu Ragari avana Ano zinyo kutu mbukamba Sese si mtinyuwa nchaka hindu zikuwa mkwekwe Zinyo zao kutu na umakutu Ata mga kasi hindu zikuwa kudara Asi mkwekwe Zinyo zinyo kutu zikuwa pavari Saka Kaja kutu kanto Yaeja yaka tanga ya zizi Sa e, ragari Kutu chao kuda kusha e, system Ye kupakika ye kutu kwa paka wani Awa unusa ungu jibadja la dola rako Saka asina piti kato ya saa izo Kale ndi ye kiti mbe kutu Iye mushandi watu we kanto Ana ruzivu cha kongo sika nge kutu Mote ya kango mira Izi vita kila chongo mira kongo tindichana Oto zimanda dola Saka pana nga vudwa kutu aiwa Sili kwa zinongo faba shwe ina kati ya mira Iyo nungo tijipe dola chetu Saka pata kutu kanto Izi zise vashia ki wayo Kutu wapante kutika na ngura za kare Eze kunewa na jimoti kari kutu muna Anzi visi ite zani kongo sika muna Oto tijipe dola Pana ita dambu ziko Ipa wapaka tike wa kari Ne jimoti kari Ne wachandi ni kanto Saka ilo yondo dambu ziko Ombe tichi Nukutidae kanto yanda ya kwani sa zikuru In short Kanto ya sani kwa kupaoka Eee Kwa time frame ni kutika muna kwa kumira Iti nisi kana kutu 10 minutes Kwa kutika kwa muna anira Onzi rai tuli rai paka Kwa kutika kwa kutika mira Ajimbo daisha kutika kwa 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 kutika Two Zinasu student activists, Elias Tafuma and Sean Zwarevashe, have gone viral after being arrested by University of Zimbabwe Protection Officers today for wearing their regalia during a clean-up campaign. Change Radio spoke to UZ student leader Tatenda Kusirai and Zinasu Harare professional spokesperson. Let's hear him speak. arrest of students uh, at the University of Zimbabwe today uh, who was not students. Uh, it is a sign and a stamp uh, of a continued tyranny, a continued uh, dictatorship. But also it shows uh, how the regime is uh, well organized and uh, well choreographed at uh, this move to thwart uh, and make sure that it uh, linguishes uh, and uh, you know, extinguish uh, all the dissenting voices of the students at the University of Zimbabwe because they are officers uh, of the university who are well known uh, to be ZANPF chairman in different branches across the country uh, and across the city but they are working uh, and now they are infringing uh, their political affiliations uh, to the works at the university but we all know that a freedom of assembly is enshrined in the constitution. We all know that the works of the academic freedom, which is guaranteed in the constitution, allows us unionism because the concept of university actually means universal knowledge in of any accept of any we either it be you know either it be unionism, either it be clubs, either it be debates. But, you know, the regime uh, has got fear in terms of uh, its bid uh, to the third term of the president. Uh, and also, there's a graduation uh, which is to take place next week. And some of our student leaders have actually starting to receive calls and threats that uh, they are going to disrupt a graduation. But we are not going to, to disrupt a graduation. But all we are saying is, where are our jobs? Now that we have graduated, but where are the jobs? because we have worked hard for the past four years. In another case, a human rights activist, Blessing Mandava, who was freed by the Karoi Magistrate Court after the witness did not show up at the court. He is being persecuted for challenging unfair distribution of food, aid, maize, by ZANU-PF officials. Let's hear more from him. 
My name is Blessing Mandawa, the Veteran Activist Association of Zimbabwe National Spokesperson, and also the Urungwe East Triple C candidate for 2023. Thank you so much, Change Radio. Thank you so much, Wajira Munya, for giving me this opportunity to air uh, what actually happened. It is indeed true that I was charged for disorderly conduct by Kasimere Police after I had challenged the ZANPF officials on the face of others for distributing maize partisanly and denying villagers food aid on partisan grounds on the 31st of August. Uh, some of these villagers were even denied food aid since they were said they were alleged to have actually denied having posts in ZANPF and some were even denied food aid for not attending these ZANPF meetings. This is why I had that argument with these uh, ZANPF officials. As Mbarashem Zanenam actually reported me for threatening him. Uh, it is really a wonder. Since I never even threatened him, but I actually stated facts uh, which were stubborn to him, and he thought that uh, those are actually deemed to be threats. Basically, these are just uh, uh, it is a clear case of persecution by prosecution. I did not threaten anyone, but I stated facts. It is a fact that villagers must not be discriminated based on partisan lines. It is also a fact that food aid is not a campaigning tool and it must not also be politicized. It is also a fact that ZANU-PF and government are two different entities. So people must not feel threatened when we state this facts. However, I was second to court today and Mr. Chawora Reginald, who happens to be the GPP for the Karawi Magistrates Court, advised us that the state will proceed by way of summons since the complainant nor the witness attended. It is a clear case of uh, persecution by prosecution. They just wanted to actually victimize me. It said, these people must not politicize food aid. People must benefit not because of who or what or which political party they belong to. Zimbabwean scientists on Thursday announced that they had discovered a cure for Alzheimer's disease and a treatment for melanoma. The group, led by Professor Simon Mukwembi, using a computer system called Rutava, a system that identifies a compound that targets only cancerous cells, sparing healthy ones, according to documents made public. This technology uses artificial intelligence and can potentially be adapted for other cancers and reduce drug development time from years to months. However, the researchers stress the need for clinical trials before proceeding with drug production. Many people in Zimbabwe do not understand the role of the media in society, which has various responsibilities, including accountability watchdog functions and advocacy. Media monitors in Zimbabwe shared a statement on social media yesterday emphasizing that the media plays a vital role in promoting national interests. To achieve this, it is important to uphold journalism laws and ethics, verify facts, and use credible sources of information. As a society, let's reflect on our commitment to nation building through truthful reporting as anyone can share information. In international news, Telegram has changed its terms for handling illegal content since yesterday to allow all users to report messages, a shift from its earlier stance that all chats on the platform were private and the platform could not protest users with requests related to illegal acts. In sports news, Zimbabwe locks horns against the Harambe Stars of Kenya today. The Warriors are seeking to book a place at the 35th edition of the Continental Showpiece slated for New Year and have adopted Uganda as their home due to the availability of a CAF approved stadium in Zimbabwe. Michael Neese, coached side, will be hosting the indomitable Lions of Cameroon at the same venue. To end the news, here are the headlines once again. President Chamisa demonstrates international standard leadership skills as he condemns Uganda violence. Chinese nationals accused of violating workers' rights 
and Musangwa's previous statements on captured judiciary proved as state cases against human rights defenders and political activists weaken. This concludes the news bulletin for today. Thank you for listening. From myself, Olive, and the entire team at Change Radio, have a blessed weekend.